the evening of September 8, 1923, seven U.S. Navy destroyers ran aground during a naval exercise at Honda Point, near the coast of Santa Barbara County in Southern California. It was the largest peacetime loss of U.S. Navy ships, claiming the lives of 23 sailors. Seven days earlier, and over 5,000 miles away, an event occurred that set the tone for the disaster. On September 1st, a magnitude 7.9 earthquake known as the Great Kanto Earthquake rocked the main Japanese island of Honshu, devastating the cities of Tokyo, Yokohama and surrounding prefectures. While anchored in Yokohama's harbour, Commander R. H. Griffin of the SS Dongola reported that at 11.55 a.m. ship commenced to tremble and vibrate violently and on looking towards the shore it was seen that a terrible earthquake was taking place. Buildings were collapsing in all directions, and in a few minutes, nothing could be seen but clouds of dust. When these cleared away, fire could be seen starting in many directions, and in half an hour, the whole city was in flames. Well over 100,000 lives were lost in the earthquake, and damage was estimated at up to $15 billion in today's money. Unusually, large swells and powerful currents swept through the Pacific Ocean and headed towards the coast of California. On the morning of September 8th, 13 destroyers of Destroyer Squadron 11 departed San Francisco for San Diego. The squadron was commanded by Captain Edward Howe Watson. A recipient of the Navy Cross for bravery during the First World War, this was his first time as unit commander after taking command of the squadron in July 1922. The squadron conducted gunnery and tactical exercises en route and a competitive speed run of 20 knots, or 37 kilometers an hour. As weather worsened late in the day, the ships formed a column behind the USS Delphi, the squadron's leader and a vessel responsible for navigation. The captain of the Delphi, Lieutenant Commander Donald T. Hunter, was also acting as the squadron's navigator, overriding his own ship's navigator. As the Delphi steamed along the coastline, Poor visibility meant the navigators had to use the ages-old technique called dead reckoning, whereby they would calculate their current position based upon the starting location and the vessel's speed and direction, and how long that speed had been maintained. At the time, radio navigation aids were new and not completely trusted. No efforts were made to measure the depth of the water, as this would require the fleet to reduce speed in order to take the necessary measurements. The ships were performing an exercise that simulated wartime conditions, and Captain Watson wanted the squadron to make a fast passage to San Diego, so the decision was made not to slow down. Around 8pm, the Delphi broadcast an erroneous report based on an improperly interpreted radio compass bearing, showing their position about 9 miles off Port Aguello. An hour later, the squadron turned east to what they thought was the Santa Barbara Channel, although it could not be seen due to the thick fog. In fact, the, the squadron was actually several miles northeast of where they thought they were, leading them into the unusually strong currents caused by the Tokyo earthquake, and the squadron headed for the rocks near Honda. At 9.05pm, the Delphi struck the rocks at a speed of 20 knots and broke in half. The SP Lee, following a few hundred yards behind, saw the Delphi and immediately turned to port, running aground on the rocks also. USS Young struck submerged rocks below her hull, causing an onrush of water that capsized her, trapping many of the engine room crew. Woodbury, Nicholas, and Fuller struck reefs and ran aground offshore. Chauncey attempted to rescue survivors from Young, but instead ran aground nearby. Alarm sirens slowed Summers and Farragut enough, so they avoided any major damage, while the other five destroyers steered clear. In the aftermath of the disaster, rescue crews were organized and dispatched. Local fishing boats and other small vessels picked up survivors from the water. Lifelines were run to shore to enable evacuation of the rest. The last sailors were rescued on the afternoon of the 9th. In total, 23 sailors lost their lives, 20 aboard Young and 3 on Delphi. After the disaster, the US government did not attempt to salvage any of the wrecks. They and the equipment aboard were sold to a scrap merchant for $1,035, or almost $17,000 today. The 7-Officer Naval Court Martial Board 
headed by Vice Admiral Henry A. Wiley, ruled that the disaster was the fault of Captain Watson and the flagship's navigators. They assigned blame to the captain of each ship that ran aground, following tradition that the captain's first responsibility is to his ship, even when following in formation. In total, 11 officers were brought up on charges of negligence and culpable inefficiency to perform one's duty. The largest single group ever court-martialed in the history of the US Navy. The court ruled that the disaster was directly attributable to bad errors and faulty navigation by the Delphi's captain and Captain Watson. Watson was stripped of his seniority and three other officers were admonished.